our webinar. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar today, which is being hosted as part of London Climate Action Week uh, 2023. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about community energy. Uh, and why is that important? Well, it's really important in this context because community energy generates 12 to 13 times more community benefit than commercial schemes, according to a government report commissioned. And um, today we've got a wealth of expertise in this particular area. Uh, I'm Lisa Ashford. Welcome everyone, I'm CEO of Ethex and Ethex is a direct impact investment platform and we have raised around 150 million pounds for communities and social enterprises to do good. Um, and a large percentage of these have been community energy projects over the last 10 years uh, around the UK. And we're going to hear from a selection of those today, uh, as well as some other um, really interesting people. So let me just uh, introduce them and then we'll run through some housekeeping and we will uh, start the webinar. So uh, alongside me today, I have Tim Davis Pugh, who is Chief Executive of Power to Change a real supporter of community energy over the years. Karina Miller from Power for People, who are local electricity bill champions, and she's going to tell you more about that and why it's so important. We have Bola Adebanjo, who is one of the non-exec directors of Bristol Energy Cooperative, who are currently live on the uh, ethics platform alongside Anne Flaherty from Solar for Schools. Welcome, Anne. Lovely to see you. And we also have Dave Green, who is representing Community Energy Together, as well as being one of the directors of uh, Shropshire and Telford Community Energy. And he's going to tell us more about what Community Energy Together uh, is trying to achieve and um, why that's so important. So um, you can enter any questions you would like through the chat function. I will try and answer those as we go through the webinar, or I will leave them for a Q&A session at the end. We are recording the session, so um, if you can't stay to the end, we will uh, send out the link and you can always watch it back. If there are any resources which are mentioned throughout the webinar, we will try and give you a link to any of those. And uh, just to say, this isn't a financial promotion and we can't offer any individual financial advice. We'll be running the webinar for about an hour today, uh, so we'll keep it tight and hopefully you can enjoy a coffee as we go. Um, brilliant. OK, welcome, everyone. So um, I'd like to hand over to Tim, first of all, who's going to kick us off and talk about the need for community energy as part of this wider um, clean energy transition in the UK. So, Tim, over to you. Thanks, Lisa, and uh, well, good to be be uh, talking about this on on this platform in in this week, really. So, uh, Power to Change, we've been a, a long time supporter of community energy through uh, our support for community businesses, um, which we very much see as as kind of being quite integral to this to this whole movement, really. Um, you know, we we know from our research uh, and evidence that you know where there are local ownership, local connection uh, to you know services, spaces, and systems that are owned by the community, then they just provide better you know better value to the public purse, uh, keep the resources uh, and jobs more local, uh, and have a you know a strong element of uh, of creating community wealth and local economy uh, activity and resilience. And the whole uh, community energy movement is is exactly in that 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 same space. So it's really good to hear uh, the government uh, support uh, for community energy. Um, we've certainly uh, seen it ourselves. Uh, Chris Skidmore, MP, uh, cited that you know his engagement with community business uh, made him the most you know optimistic he could be about uh, the ability of uh, the UK to reach a, a sort of net zero in his review. Uh, as you know, the communities could really galvanise that together. So you know uh, that that's good to hear. But we also know that uh, you know over seventy percent of community businesses that that uh, responded to our reports, uh, market survey report, 
uh, said that the way that they they trade or operate uh, was improving the environment and tackling climate change as well. So they actually kind of almost hardwire in uh, some of those uh, uh, community energy and uh, and net zero greener economy uh, aspects to it. And, and I guess it's really you know uh, it, it, even more I guess even more acute in this you know in the current sort of climate that we're we're sitting in uh, at the moment. Um, you know, we seem to be sort of lurching from crisis to crisis. Uh, you know, we we come out of a pandemic, which has had a you know kind of massive impact on people's lives. Uh, I move into a cost of living uh, crisis, which is exasperated by energy costs, uh, and the volatility of that is you know is is kind of you know it doesn't seem to be calming down anytime soon. Um, and I think for us, we you know we we see the notion of sort of economic stability uh, and inequality being you know being linked very much to sort of climate, and so energy plays a you know significant role uh, role in that that sort of role in changing you know changing the nature of how communities can you know survive and build resilience in this. So I suppose moving on to the kind of a, a bit about you know what what we see, what we can evidence uh, and champion about uh, where community-owned uh, energy can really really make a difference. So um, you know we 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 absolutely uh, have supported this for for I mean a, a good few years. Uh, we pumped a lot of money uh, into helping community businesses develop uh, community energy schemes, uh, looking at the sort of net zero. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, with community owned assets, um, a higher percentage uh, of money spent in them stays within the sort of local community than it does with, with private sector uh, organisations. And that's replicated in the whole energy uh, market as well. So we put uh, money into um, a scheme uh, in Bristol, uh, Ambition Lauren Weston, who are currently are building uh, one of uh, the largest uh, onshore uh, wind turbines um, uh, currently, you know, currently about to operate. Um, and it's it's going to be able to provide uh, enough energy for, uh, for nearly 4,000 homes, uh, you know, saving nearly, you know, 2,000 tonnes of CO2. But what's also really important is it then its profit is returned back into the community as well. So not only do you get that energy resilience, uh, that stability uh, of energy, as well as contributing uh, to the sort of net zero, it's actually generating resources and benefit for the for the local community. And we know that uh, on our kind of fuel poverty work that, you know, uh, for nine pounds of social benefit uh, is generated for every one pound spent when it's a community energy scheme. So again, you know, we just see this really kind of uh, quite important link between uh, the notion of creating much more resilience and stability in the energy market in actually helping communities to grow and prosper uh, across the board. Um, and then I suppose the, the, the only thing I'd, I'd kind of also then uh, want, want to talk about a little bit is, uh, is, is that kind of renewable energy ov overall. So uh, we've, we've invested uh, about £10 million pounds into, uh, into community energy uh, directly. Um, through schemes like uh, CORE, uh, which is Community Owned Renewable Energy, a series of uh, solar farms that we're transferring into uh, community uh, ownership, um, which again has that ability to not only create a, a, a more cost effective, st uh, stable kind of uh, energy resource for the communities that it serves, but also generating ongoing community benefit as well, um, rather than the profits uh, going uh, going to private uh, private hands. So it has that you know ability to keep renewing, keep driving that that prospect forwards. Uh, and then alongside that, we've also been trying to sort of uh, experiment and and help support a range of other uh, innovative ideas. Um, around kind of solar charging, uh, community uh, um, electric sort of delivery schemes, uh, you know, just a kind of whole whole range of, uh, of measures that we hope will kind of, again, help communities to, to sort of really overcome uh, the notion of, of the challenges that that has been presented to us. So I think that's that's kind of our our kind of case for uh, for, for why we think uh, community energy is is kind of really important. Um, so I'll hand, hand back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Tim. Um, and let's just take that to the next level. Once we have these amazing community energy schemes uh, all over the country, how can we then try and link those directly to the communities 
uh, that they're generating in, in order to be able to supply the electricity, because that's often what uh, people want, actually. They really want to see uh, those <clears throat> projects actually supplying them. And obviously they have to just connect to the grid and, uh, and that's not possible. But um, Karina here is going to tell us a bit more about what the um, lobbying work they've been doing uh, around the local e electricity bill. Hi everyone. Yes, thank you so much, Lisa. Um, so basically, uh, it's kind of a, it's a. We've been working on this campaign since about 2017, um, so a while now, including during COVID. That's when uh, 2017 is when our founder Steve Shaw decided to make this his sole focus for for power for people. It was just him to begin with. Um, he actually worked on just a few campaigns of um, that ended up becoming law. So the Doorstop Recycling Act. That means that obviously we all get our, our recycling taken away every week or every other week in my case. Um, and uh, also the Climate Change Act of 2008. But uh, the local electricity bill is a bill we drafted um, and it has been introduced in parliament. It's a pro an approach that I think is where we kind of stand out as an organization, especially for our size. Um, if made law, it would enable community energy run schemes to sell their clean uh, power locally. So. That would mean it would make, you know, making new schemes financially viable, being properly re remunerated for the generation that these schemes are actually um, contributing and realizing a huge potential for more schemes. Because right now, as I'm sure anyone who's part of a community energy scheme can vouch for most, um, you know, most people who are working are, are, are volunteers. You know, it's not a viable business at the moment because there's no route to market. Um, schemes get around, I, I don't know if this is still accurate, around five pence, potentially even less per kilowatt hour right now for the electricity they sell to the national um, national grid. And we as consumers buy it for around 30 pence plus per kilowatt hour. And um, the, the aim of the campaign uh, is to uh, make sure that these groups actually get a fair price for the clean energy they generate. We believe those profits should be in the market. The profits uh, should go directly to the generators. Um, at the moment, our focus is seeing this done through getting the bill uh, included in a piece of government legislation called the Energy Bill. Um, our clauses to the Energy Bill, uh, which are basically the same wording of the local electricity bill, um, we got them in the House of Lords. They were voted into the bill itself because they weren't originally part of it. And then we um, we campaigned and, and had a lot of people writing to their MPs and basically pushing. And we worked with some of the um, the Lords in the House of Lords to actually uh, get the those clauses in the bill itself, which was great. Um, the bill then moved to the House of Commons and it has been debated on. And um, our clause is actually around a week ago were voted to uh, be removed from the bill, which was obviously very disappointing, but um, we did expect this. It wasn't kind of a big surprise because the government doesn't currently support what we are calling for. Um, so we have been in talks with the energy minister, Andrew Bowie, uh, who has promised, this was actually yesterday, a big update yesterday, who has promised in parliament that quote, something is coming. <laughs> um, we don't know what that is yet, but um, it seems that, you know, the amount of pressure we've been putting on the government and the amount of people who have been writing to their MPs has been absolutely detrimental in um, causing the government to say, OK, wait a second, we need to, you know, we need to do something about this now. Um, Lisa, so sorry, I just wanted to, should I go on to the next bit for what's yeah, the campaign asking for? Yeah. OK, great. So I didn't want to <laughs> interrupt during. Um, so uh, in terms of what the campaign is asking for and what we've achieved so far, we, um, we've achieved 200, uh, sorry, 323 MPs that back the local electricity bill itself. And that's from a cross party basis. So that's nearly half of the House of Commons, half would be 325. Um, this includes over 120 Labour MPs and 128 Conservative MPs. Um, the campaign is really, you know, we are really intentionally trying to make it cross party. Um, it's also now in the Labour Party policy, SNP party policy, Green Party policy and Lib Dem party policy. 
Um, and this has only happened because of the massive grassroots advocacy that we've been organizing over the years uh, across the country. Um, we find overwhelmingly that people want to act to help their communities and the environment. And we like to think that we kind of help people find a way to, to, to do this by um, helping them write to their MP, helping them lobby, helping them feel like they have a voice in the government right now. Um, we've also brought together over 110 national authorities and a coalition of 80 national organizations in support, um, to name a few, uh, EVEX National Trust, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, RSPB, CPRE, just to just to name a few. Um, we were also recently featured in a, in a BBC article because of a letter to the energy minister we published, um, which was signed by over uh, 60 national organizations. Um, I'm happy to, to provide a link to that as well. And I guess I'll just end with uh, what is it that you can do as an individual to help out? Um, so the biggest thing you can do is sign up to the campaign on our website, www.powerforpeople.org.uk. Um, we send one email a month updating you on the progress of the campaign and you know give you some information on how you can support. More often than not, we will ask you to write to your MP. Um, this is a hugely important ask. Uh, we can help you draft an email and we can help you reply and continue conversations with your MP. Um, because when you do receive an email back, it is, you know, it is vital that you keep talking. We don't, you know, it's so important to continue to, to communicate with your MP. We don't have anything like kind of a standard, you know, copy paste email. We found that that's really ineffective because a lot of MPs actually have filters on their, on their email systems to filter out copy pasted or repeat emails. Um, but, you know, we understand people can feel a bit daunting. It can be a bit daunting writing to your MP. So we're more than happy at any point to help you draft something, you know, you know, having a clear ask is so important, writing in your own words and um, just, you know, feeling like you are confident and feeling like you can just, add, you know, MPs are at the end of the day, they work for us. So it's really important to continue to communicate with them and say, you know, please support this bill, please support what, you know, what they're calling for. This is really important. Um, and you can find a list of MPs that do support the bill on our website. We also have a, a kind of blog post debunking the government line kind of of their points on why they're not supporting this at the moment and um, blogs to update you on the status of the campaign. So, excuse me, uh, if you have not signed up to the campaign, we really, really would appreciate it at powerforpeople.org.uk. Good, um, we hear loud and clear. Thank you thank very you. much, Karina. <laughs> um, so that's something really tangible that you can do. So um, thank you to Karina for, for outlining that. And I, I think it's a, it's a super interesting area and the evolution of community energy is certainly heading in that direction and everybody can play a part to um, help that along its way. So how do we make this whole sector bigger? How can we have a stronger voice um, by doing more of what we're doing? Um, and let's just look at the blockers um, for a moment to these community energy schemes and how we can uh, enable more to, to come forward uh, and be developed. And also um, why in particular is this uh, particularly interesting? How does it democratize um, energy generation, et cetera? So um, Tim, question to you as power to change. Um, at what stage does power to change from these projects? So, uh, and, and where do they go in terms of uh, that development finance that they need to assess whether there's a suitable uh, community renewable project in the area or, um, and then perhaps I'll, I'll go to a few of the panelists as well to just um, chip in on their particular experiences as well. Yeah, so I, I think um, from Power to Change's perspective, our, our role was always to see, see how, how we kind of get these things up and tested so that hopefully there's models that people can use uh, to, you know, to attract other, other funders to sort of put, put money behind them. Uh, because we, you know, we're, we're not a, a significant funder 
um, our resources uh, are, are kind of not, you know, not the same as as mainstreaming other uh, other funding schemes. So uh, when we when we kind of enter into uh, uh, the energy community, energy markets, uh, it's often about trying to test uh, test things and see how they 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 can work. Um, and therefore, we then publish as much information about what works and equally what doesn't work. Uh, with the hope that people can use that evidence to uh, to sort of get get schemes schemes up and running. Having said that, we're we're kind of big uh, uh, big supporters of uh, um, things like Booster and the community shares market, um, and you know it would be nice uh, to see uh, the the increase in feeding tariffs that we've seen uh, in previous years uh, as a way of actually uh, helping those schemes to. To sort of get get the funding up front, so they can demonstrate that uh, they you know they can uh, they can make themselves sustainable. So with our current big scheme uh, around core, uh, we're you know we're kind of looking to uh, publish how you know how that's worked, where, where people can uh, then look at uh, access to finance to to replace uh, or to create their own schemes uh, going forwards. Um, but all the time we're looking for. For innovative new ideas that we can help support, test, uh, and then hopefully publish uh, how how this works, so other people can pick them up and run with them. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and Bola, coming to you. Um, hi. Obviously, you're representing uh, Bristol Energy Cooperative today. Um, that particular uh, organisation is one of the most sort of long-standing in in the sector. How uh, has the organisation developed in terms of, you know, when they were just operating on a sort of single project basis to now developing to the point where, you know, this is a really credible, strong, robust organisation that is really scaling up its, um, its generation? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lisa. So just to give a bit of background, Bristol Energy Corp was set up 2011, so we are 12 years old. And it's currently made up of, well, it was set up um, with a combination of, you know, community um, partners and energy groups within Bristol City. So we actually started within the city, but now we do collaborate locally, regionally, and we've got national partners. We currently have just eight employees so we're not big but we've got you know motivated you know energized very passionate employees and then we've got a board of just six voluntary um, non-exec directors including myself and in terms of what we've been able to achieve within the 12 years as you said we started really small but with the passion and the drive to expand and make things better giving back to the community we have so far delivered 17 clean energy um, projects mainly you know community ownership based we've also completed successfully 14 rooftop um install install installations of solar pvs again into our community mainly around installing um on community centers we also have two solar farms which are thriving with support from our partners and then we've got um the um battery storage capacity that will provide back into the community so in ordinary language, day-to-day -day language, what, what does that mean? So we are providing enough energy to power over 3,000 homes in the community and across, you know, regionally and um, in other communities that we're partnering with. So day-to-day, -day, what motivates us to, is to be able to provide the benefits needed by the society. And how do we do this, basically? It's mainly looking at how we could ensure that the community benefits from renewal, renew, renewable technology, because the more they benefit directly and it's impacting their day-to-day -day lives, then the more interest or invested interest they will have to become part of the energy transition. And what we've been doing, which we started in Bristol, was installing solar rooftop PVs in our community centers. So not only were we installing the PV um, PVs, but also we were managing that and we're still managing the PVs once it's installed. And then we agree a price um, with them that would be much lower than what they would pay their normal energy supplier. So we sell back the energy to them at much lower cost. And by doing that, the community centers within Bristol and surrounding 
we are so proud to say that we are giving back um, over £20,000 yearly savings back to the community centres and back to us, to our partners. And the way we do that is by partnering with them to install the PVs, uh, but also we manage it on their behalf. So that way it's not any burden on them, but rather we are making them part of the transition as we progress. We also give back um, in other ways, you know, we have um, a charity which we give donations to different charities across, um, not just Bristol, but also deserving partners across. We do have a research fund, which we provide to, you know, fund um, improving research around um, clean energy. And we also give funding, um, which we do via the Megawatt Community Energy Fund. And also really proud to say that one of the beneficials that we had recently was the Black and Green Ambassador, which their focus is to ensure that there is inclusive, um, there is inclusivity. And also, you know, you have, um, more community presence in terms of the benefit and the drive of who are getting involved in um, environmental movement. And they were one of the amongst many that have benefited from you know, what we do into the community. But we do have very importantly some projects that are ongoing, which are really close to our hearts. And one of this is the Water Lily, uh, Water Lily's microgrid in Bristol. So this is another one, very passionate, very close to home. And what is this? So this is the first, and again, really proud to say that it's the first UK domestic housing microgrid with power storage. So we are providing this energy, clean energy to over 33 homes in a community hub. And we're also giving them the required energy via, you know, air source heat pump, we are encouraging and providing um, EV car charging clubs. We have um, Tesla battery being provided to store the energy, but also when it is needed, we can also um, sell you know, the feedback into the grid. So we are trying to create um, a more self-sustaining community hub and providing the energy they need to get this sustainability. We're not just doing this within the Bristol community, we're also um, expanding. We have another very passionate, close to our heart project, which is the Bridgeport co-housing microgrid, which is in Dorset. So not too far, but yep. it's not just limiting that to, to Bristol. And this includes 38 homes, 15 apartments, um, again, community hub. And with this, we are providing 210 kilowatts um, per hour um, solar PV. We're also providing them air source heat pumps for space heating and also hot water. We also have on site, you know, battery storage, and then we are providing um, car club, which is you know EV charging capability. Mm -hmm. So how do we do all this? It's by getting funding. We raise funds, we do notes, and we do also have um, share offers that we use to raise um, funding for us. So far, we've raised over 15 million over the past 12 years to support all the good work that is being done. And we do have a share offer, which is our share offer number nine that is live. So please, please do support us. It is currently live. Um, we've only so far achieved 33% of our target. So we are counting on people to support us so we can continue providing this community benefits, the more community benefits we provide into our community and other communities that we're partnering with in other regions and also, also nationally, then the more you know, communities will be invested and more interested in being part of this you know, um, transition and clean energy evolution. And we're Thank also going you. to continue our charity, our funding, you know, research funding for environmental, um, uh, research that are being done, not just within our community to emphasize that, even though we are called Bristol Energy Corp, we have expanded and we want to keep expanding. So please do support us. Um, we'll put, probably we'll be able to provide more um, detail of the share offer if needed, but please do support us. We yeah, are looking to do you. more. Thank you. Thank you. You're live on the FX website. People can find um, out information there. Thank um, thank you for such a passionate uh, introduction to Beck. That is what we like to see. And um, 
also particularly interesting to hear about the inclusivity part, yes. which I think is extremely interesting and and something which I think within the sector we need to pay more attention to. Um, and really interesting with regards to the community hub, the integrated services um, that is starting to take community energy to the next level. Um, speaking of which, so I want to bring Anne into the conversation uh, as well. Anne, um, one of the directors of Solar for Schools and um, really interesting model, which is uh, helping obviously schools to be able to uh, generate their own electricity and to be able to replicate that across many schools around the UK. So um, potential for scaling is massive. Um, so Anne, how have you, getting back to this question of, um, you know, how have you been able to uh, do that development work, you know, what what has been your model and how have you managed to retrieve achieve that sort of growth and the ability to replicate so well so lisa hi there and hello everyone um so really just like bola really in the same way what we're doing is we're we're supplying solar power through to schools uh, at a low cost uh which means that um we're able to then um provide the schools with you know that financial benefit um I think the, the beauty of Solar for Schools, though, is that it reaches communities directly um, because the school is in itself its own community. And um, and then the the parents and um, and, and families are, are sort of a local community. Um, again, what, what's beautiful about Solar for Schools is that it's national. So we 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 are absolutely passionate about uh every individual having equal access to solar power. Um, so we, uh, as you know, as you know, Lisa, we, we raise through ethics uh, nationally, and then we deploy uh, the funds nationally, which means that, that many schools in many deprived areas of the country, which you know locally might not be able to actually support um, their own uh, investment, are able to benefit from the solar power. And um, and for us, it's 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 not only a financial gain for the schools. Um, you know, we lead very heavily on on an educational benefit that comes as a result of having the solar power, because you know, installing it takes a couple of weeks. Um, but but once you've got it, you've got to make sure that you're getting that value through um, through the operational efficiency of the of the system, uh, so it delivers you know the carbon savings. Um, it, it delivers on. Um, on the finances, um, saving the schools money so they get a better value, as Tim was saying, um, for the um, for the public money that they're spending on their energy, and that um, and that, that they're getting that social benefit through uh, because, as I say, we lead on on um, decarbonisation and, and education through to the students year on year um, as they're going through, and you know that will help decarbonise society much faster because. You know, by educating young people, they come out the other side of it and they're passionate to make sure that, you know, something happens locally within their areas. So um, so that's how we're really scaling up. And and we're using actually we're joining forces with um, quite a few uh, local energy groups um, who, who who may be looking to achieve their own uh, programs on um, on their own community buildings. Um, but we we work with them on the schools just to help them understand how we do it so they can do it better themselves. Um, but also that way we all achieve more. Um, and uh, as I say, uh, we've got a lot of passionate um, people um, who are looking at, at powering schools locally. Um, I wonder if you could just touch upon some of the funding that you've um, managed to raise to sort of like build out your whole platform educational platform etc because I think that's a really interesting element to how you're taking uh the whole model to the next sort of level if you like and really engaging uh individuals at the schools and children etc who hopefully then go and tell their parents and their grandparents and their friends and you get that brilliant ripple effect yeah so um so how 
I mean, we raise funding through individuals. Uh, we've got a very, very good um, investor base already. Um, and then we tended to use ethics um, to raise money for our, um, for our projects. Um, but we've invested um, as ourselves, as a company, we've, we've invested in um, a lot of IT so that, so that we can, you know, uh, review schools very quickly and easily to see, you know, how, how we can deploy solar onto them. Um, we're very efficient in that way of doing things. But I mean, as you say, educationally, we actually do a lot on site. On site makes such a difference. So when we're doing our maintenance work and everything like that, we're into schools, we're running workshops, where um, uh, we, we get children involved from day one um, so that they are, as you say, Lisa, they're going back into their communities, uh, back to their parents. Um, they're telling them all about it. Um, and, and that's, again, fueling other, you know, homes to actually look at, you know, families to look where, where possible to look at, um, you know, actually installing their own solar. Um, so there is there is that ripple effect. Um, but but it is, it, you know. The reason our installers love love installing on schools is because you know they'll spend time with students um, on that journey. So it's not just about getting in there, getting the solar on the roof. It's it's all about that um, that journey uh, for the students, um, for the local community, um, and 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 involving people along the way. Um, so so. As I say, with some of the local energy groups, how, how the people get involved is they'll they're very passionate themselves and they'll go to their local school and say, you know, why don't you join? You know, this is all about it. And and, and we share that journey with them as well. So um, so it is it is about, you know, reaching out to communities and and seeing what we can do for them. Yeah, thank you. Truly uh, democratizing uh, uh, community energy all the way down to um to kids, which is brilliant, because they're going to be the ones who will be building the next generation of community energy schemes. So let's let's start them off early. Um, so so Dave, um, Dave is going to give us uh, some background on this. Well, first of all, you're um, representing uh, you've got two hats today, at least um, representing um, Shropshire and, and Telford Community Energy. Um, but also part of this bigger scheme, this community energy together portfolio, which is a really exciting uh, initiative that Power to Change and uh, Big Society Capital have been backing. And um, if you could just tell us about that, because I think it's really interesting to um, think about how we're starting to pull uh, some of those commercial assets that have been set up, which obviously are providing great environmental benefit, but aren't necessarily providing any community benefit. We're pulling them into uh, the community energy sector and creating um, so much more um, benefits and, uh, and helping to expand the uh, overall capacity of community owned renewable energy in the UK so that we can actually become a much bigger uh, group of organizations and a much bigger voice uh, which is obviously going to help uh, Karina in time as well so we can just take over the entire energy system yeah. in due course. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah thanks Lisa yeah so I'm Dave Green I'm director of Shropshire and Telford Community Energy we're a new group we were set up specifically to take the uh, 10 megawatt solar's farm uh Tremlow's solar farm in North Shropshire into community ownership it's six seven years old it's been running it's been owned by the developers core bought it and, and took it into their sort of trust ownership and then been looking for a society to um take it over and run it from 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 here on in so we're joined together with four other groups so that's Yelm in Somerset Isle of Wight Kent and Gower in South Wales between us, we will be buying 36 megawatts of solar farms, um, which will add, we reckon, around 20% to the community owned solar in England and Wales. So it's a significant gear change, if you like. Um, and um, it's a unique, it's a unique offer, I think. Um, hopefully all five of us will be launching our share offer at the same time later in the summer. 
Uh, Gower are slightly behind, but we think they're catching up. Um, but um, and this will be launched on FX as a as a group offer with um, with national publicity to go alongside the the local effort. Now, if you if you buy shares, you will be buying shares in Shropshire and Telford Community Energy in Twemlow's. But we have a linkage We the, the five groups will be working together and supporting each other. And we've one of the ways we've done that is we've basically taken on a very large, what they call cross collateralized loan to bring in the jargon. So we've managed to get a very good deal from Aberdeen on the on the on the primary senior senior financing for these these schemes. So we're looking to raise two and a half million uh, between us um, in share offer at this stage, and then we'll be looking to raise further money. Uh, to pay off um, some of the loans uh, over the coming um, sort of five years or, or so. Um, it's really great. It's a wonderful scheme, but um, some people say, well, well, what's the point? Because the, the solar farms are already there. They're already generating. They're already saving carbon. Well, they are saving carbon, but the profit is going into the hands, has been going into the hands of the local developers with a relatively small community benefit fund. So between us, we should be generating around 20 million pounds in community benefit over the next 20 years. And um, uh, what we want to see is, is to make sure that that money is well spent. Now, some of it is going to go on play equipment or community orchards or you know all all good things that that communities need but we're keen to see as much of it as possible actually going into further community energy and renewable energy schemes so we we're already putting solar panels on community buildings um you know giving grants for we're not doing it you know because they're the sort of buildings it's very difficult to find a financial model in the way um bristol community energy are doing um so you know we're giving we're giving grants to people to do energy efficiency work and put solar panels on. We've also been doing a lot of work again with help from Power to Change through their Next Generation grant. So thanks a lot, Tim, uh, um, uh, for your support in here. We've been doing some work looking at other larger scale um, community energy projects in Shropshire, including a Bishop's Castle heat and wind network project, which will probably be of interest to Caroline, who was asking a question about. Um, off gas grid communities uh, in the in in the chat. So there, we're hope we're hoping to um, install a one megawatt wind turbine, um, feeding uh, air source heat pumps, feeding heat to a uh, to an off gas grid community. So we'll take one one unit of energy out of the wind, and we'll we'll turn it into three units of heat. Anyway, that's a that's a slight aside. But the important thing is that what we're doing is we're creating STCE as a credible organization with a name and a reputation and a cash flow that will be able to go on and do much bigger things um that so it's not just about buying treblos it's not just about the 36 megawatts of the 20 million in community benefit it's about moving on from there and doing um so much more yeah brilliant dave and um you know, just really important point that a lot of the community energy schemes in the UK, out of the surpluses that they create, this community benefit, many make those grants available to other uh, community energy organisations in, in the making or, or even people with, you know, potentially ideas. And, and that's what helps to then you know, sow those seeds so that we are beginning to multiply. Um, and, you know, obviously the benefits can can increase, which is fantastic, as well as really, um, you know, from a democratic point of view, the communities are telling these groups, uh, this is what we want, actually, this isn't necessarily a top down oh, we think that this is a really good idea, therefore we're going to um, drop these funds into specific projects. Often the community groups will set up some kind of process where the community can really have a voice and um, determine how that money is spent, which is so important. Um, so this grassroots kind of action, but really beginning to bubble up into more and more schemes uh, across the UK. 
Um, Lisa. So, yes. Um, I think what's really interesting about Sailor for Schools, which a lot of people don't realize actually, is that um, we're, we're very unique as a community because our, our members are actually the schools who have the solar on them rather than the, the individuals who have, who have made the investment. And, and any of the profits that are generated by that community are actually distributed by the community members who are the schools back to the schools. And that has a real benefit through to the schools um, so they see their community growing and, and, you know, any, any, any financial benefits coming back to the schools as a result of, of, of you know, their investment in, in a program that's seeing, you know, renewable energy coming through into their schools. And, you know, it, it is, it's so important that, that, you know, schools do get that, you know, great value for money in terms of, you know, what they're doing and, and where they're at. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Anne. <clears throat> so let's um, let's go to some of the questions if we can uh, try and run through some of those. Um, so there was a question around offsetting. We won't go into the details right now because it's quite a big topic around um, double counting. Uh, but basically, it's quite limited in the UK in terms of uh, what can be counted as an offset. So um, perhaps we can provide some reading on that uh, rather than delving into it right now. Um, good, someone's asked for the uh, research, which I'm sure we can try and find the link to that and send it out um, after the session. Um, there was a question around uh, what kind of organisations might qualify as a community. Um, and I, I just popped in there around community benefit societies. Many of these schemes are set up as community benefit societies, which is a specific legal entity. Some of them are cooperatives. Some of them are KICS, which is a community interest company. Um, and if you go to the um, Co-ops UK website, um, I'm sure you can read a lot more good stuff about that um, if you have any further questions on that. Um, right, let's have a look. How can community energy schemes support local green businesses and green jobs training as separate entities as green energy is a new asset? Um, I'm going to throw that one to Tim. Any ideas um, on that one? Um, I, I, I guess uh, it, it perhaps um, runs back into some of the points Dave was, you know, was making about uh, recycling, you know, the, the sort of funding from other schemes um, uh, and, uh, you know, looking at how uh, if you're actually developing, you know, kind of you have a commitment to sort of getting, getting community benefit from, uh, from a community scheme. Perhaps using you know using some of that money to uh, to sort of uh, create uh, space for training for you know the green jobs green green technology. Um, we have put some funding in through uh, again something that uh, Dave mentioned uh, through our next gen program, uh, where we have tried to sort of think about different uh, different ways of uh, of creating uh, you know kind of green you know green technologies green uh, green energies. Um, but uh, yeah, others others might have uh, have more interesting uh, uh, smaller sort of uh, opportunities that uh, that they can they can refer to as well. Yeah, I think um, just on, from our side of it, it, it's it's that upskilling upskilling of young people. You know, if they can really understand what what energy is about, you know, you know how many people can conceptualize what a kilowatt hour is. You know, most people struggle enormously even with a kilogram let, let alone a kilowatt hour of energy um and i think i think what we're trying to do um through solar for schools is really you know build on young people and their knowledge you know and and their desire to know more about renewables you know their it's their investment in their futures and um and so we're very keen that that we can if we can look at ups upskilling people so that so that they do have a much a much broader and 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 also more specific actually um understanding of renewable energy so that they can you know take jobs in in the green green economy moving forward 
And there's a yeah. lot of the industry that's happening. You know, there's a lot of manufacturers and people like that within the industry who want to see, you know, things changing. So I think there are some huge opportunities that are going to come into play in, in the not too distant future for young people. Can I just say for Bristol Energy Corp, we have had um, a few, again, we're a very small organization, but we have had apprenticeship, you know, opportunities because the young, you know, younger people are a lot, you know, more keen and zeal to contribute and get involved in, you know, green energy, um, reducing carbon um, footprints. And also we have, you know, in the past 12 years, provided or given back via charities or donations. And we do fund research about 350,000 pounds so far has been put into that to help not just the communities, but also it depends on the kind of business. So if it's a green business, if there's enough justification and you know understanding the business case or what they want to use it for, then it's something that can be considered and has been considered in the past. So there are opportunities out there and you know, Bristol Energy Corp, we do support and give back to the society. And it's not just Bristol, it's, you know, looking wider, a bigger picture around what we mean by the community and what we mean by a society, please. Yeah, that's important to note because uh, often with these community benefit societies, the community is not just actually the local geographic community, it's also a community of like-minded people across the UK who uh, believe that renewable energy generation and community driven renewable energy generation is really important so that you know you get that more interesting sectoral uh, bias as well um, and there is also uh, so interestingly I think we are in the UK really quite far behind in terms of training schemes and apprenticeships for young people for um, this particular sector I was talking to someone yesterday and apparently Germany has got really well developed uh, training schemes. If you're an engineer, you know, you get the opportunity to be a renewable and green engineer. Um, and uh, we just raised money a couple of months ago for an organization who is specifically looking at trying to encourage female uh, engineers into retrofitting um, housing for renewable energy, um, which is, you know, women are majorly underrepresented in this area as well. So um, good. OK, excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, question around Scottish heat network schemes, schemes to only seems to only work with councils, seems to be no way for a community led group to be credible enough for significant funding, i.e. multi million. Well, um, so any idea on vehicle or funders to enable large community schemes to get going? Well, if I could give a couple of examples, I mean, obviously, um, you know, in terms of the development finance needed uh, or that uh, feasibility finance, there are people like Power to Change. Um, someone else has listed a, um, a grant scheme further on in the chat. Um, there is... Um, Community England website, which is always good to look at because uh, they will give you information on uh, potentially if there's any grant schemes available. People like MCS Charitable Foundation um, and also some of the more general uh, foundations in the UK like Esme Fairburn or Joseph Rowntree, um, to name a few. Um, in terms of the size of community energy, I think what we're seeing is that that there is no limit to size actually or ambition um, and the community benefit society model it serves really well um, if you're bringing together multiple parties there are now um, beginning to be aggregation models which are um, proving themselves such as the community energy together um, which bring in senior lenders, more institutional finance into this market whilst allowing the community to find their feet and grow and build and then eventually pay back that senior debt. So, um, yeah, I think sky's the limit, really. Um, anyone else want to chip in there? OK, let's move on to the next question. Um, do, 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 do. So we've got lots of good examples in there, which is really great. 
Um, and um, Karina, I appreciate you haven't come in. Um, are there any of these questions specifically that um, you would like to talk to? Please just chip in. No, I was reading a few earlier. Uh, they're a bit more specific on, you know, community energy directly or community energy groups, which we're kind of, you know, on the periphery of. Obviously, we're trying to with the, you know, our campaign is trying to change um, how how these groups would actually get a fair price, but nothing, nothing too specific. I think I did. Someone said that my um, potentially the figures I was giving the three pence per kilowatt hour versus or five pence per kilowatt hour versus the 30 that you get back might be a bit off. So I apologize about that. It is, I I think at some point I was speaking to a community energy group last weekend at an event in um in Favisham. I was talking to Kent Community Energy. I think one of them was saying that they get 2.5 pence per kilowatt hour or something like that. So apologies if I got that wrong either one way or the other. Um so okay. Karina it helps, you know, we set up a, an export contract quite recently for one of our schools and um and it was it was around nine pence. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's coming down. Um, last year they were particularly high, the export rates. Um, but uh, but it's certainly coming down. And it and it mm -hmm. probably will disappear completely. Um, unless unless well. uh, we so so we do need to look as as communities um at ways that we can, as you were saying, you know, improve um the returns that you're getting from the from the total generation. Um mm of your renewable um assets so um but but hopefully that gives as well people some idea of of what they might be able to see um yeah online. definitely thank you and i think that is a point which uh is important and why perhaps you're beginning to see these more integrated schemes where you're pulling in you know battery and you're pulling in um ev uh because that helps to make the whole business model more robust with the um, with the money that's uh, generated through the uh, sale of electricity. So um, I think we're going through, are we going through maybe like Community Energy 2.0 or, or have we already advanced now to like 5.0 or something? I don't know, but <laughs> much more... Um, <clears throat> sophisticated schemes which is really interesting um and the microgrids that we were talking about earlier as well um you know a lot more of those starting to bubble up and some some people getting some good um grant money to be able to sort of look at the feasibility of those which is which is really important um someone's asked a question around uh potentially the potential of their uh, own community energy scheme in Sheffield. Um, I guess probably looking at the Community Energy England website again, there are good resources to look at uh, different developers and people who you can have a conversation with to look at the feasibility of those. Um, any other questions that people would like to quickly uh, dive in on? There was a question somebody wanted to talk about barriers and i mean we haven't got time to cover that here that's a whole separate workshop really but you know um i wouldn't i wouldn't start with a big project i wouldn't start with a wind turbine under the current planning organization i probably wouldn't start with a hydro i probably wouldn't start with a with a ground mounted you know solar farm because all of those do have significant barriers and difficulties to overcome and are likely to uh tie you up for a few years it's it it's undoubtedly that rooftop rooftop solar is is you know I, I, i'm not saying it's easy but it it hasn't got the same um the same barriers to it as as um as the other three technologies would have started a smaller scale and and as your as your society develops confidence um you you can you can grow you know or talk to somebody like Solar for Schools or uh, the big solar co-op who are doing this, you know, over a wider area rather than setting up your own society. Yes, good point. Thanks, Dave. Um, so <clears throat> thank you to everyone for being on the panel today. 
Uh, if you'd like more information on Solar for Schools or Bristol Energy Co-op, you can go to the FX website or the individual uh, websites of those entities. Loads of great information for you there. Um, Dave will be seeing you on the platform soon with all of the rest of the gang uh, as part of um, this brilliant uh, collaboration um, as Community Energy Together. So we're really excited about that. That's coming up soon. Everybody, please uh, rewind to the bit that Karina was talking about what you need to do to um, start lobbying. That's brilliant. And um, yes, thank you to Tim at Power to Change as well for supporting the sector and, and coming along today. Someone asked a question about, um, <clears throat> I'm sure more people would like to be involved in investment, but are unaware of FX. Do you have any more plans for more promotions? please do tell all of your friends and family about FX and all the brilliant projects that we support. Um, and yes, we'd very much like to support uh, more and more um, projects and to uh, for everybody to know about us. So spread the word far and wide. Um, uh, I think the community, community Energy Together launch later this summer because it's so much larger, well, uh, you know, we are working on national publicity for that, which okay. hopefully will make people more aware of community energy and, and of ethics. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you all again for joining. Um, thanks everyone for listening and contributing. We'll send out a follow-up email. Um, have the rest of a brilliant day. See you later. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.